Hi Tony from Songwriters Chop Shop here and today I'm going to be talking about different rhyme types and what effect they can have on our lyrics. We've all heard of perfect rhymes but that's just one type of rhyme. Broadly speaking the rest are called slant rhymes but even that's an oversimplification. Along with different rhyme schemes they can really help add mood and emotion to our lyrics. And if you're looking for weekly songwriting tips, tools and techniques be sure to hit that subscribe button. Understanding the different types of rhyme we have at our disposal as songwriters lets us expand the possibilities to support or even create the emotion we're trying to get across in our lyrics without it sounding too corny or cliche, unless that's what you want. So let's have a look at the main types of rhyme we use in songwriting and what effect they have on our lyrics. Identical rhyme. So first up is identical rhyme. This is where we rhyme a word with itself. Some people might just think this is lazy songwriting or call it repetition. It all depends how you use it. It's just rhyming danger zone with danger zone. Here's a couple of examples. Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. Our human ears love repetition. It makes things easier to remember by drawing your attention to it and emphasizing it. She could have used the line, see you later guy, but the title of the song is Skater Boy. So as Peter Griffin pointed out, this is a good one to reserve for our choruses as a way to emphasize words through repetition. Identical rhyme is also used when a word has two different meanings, as in War Pigs by Black Sabbath. So again, here it's used for emphasis. Like a joke, a man walks into a bar and hurts his head. So in the joke, the comedy lies in first seeing the bar as a place to buy drinks and then realizing it was an iron bar that the man hit his head on. In the lyric, it's been used to emphasize the gathering generals, not as noble, heroic or brave, but more an act of malice and evil, of wanton destruction. Look how Drake uses it, not only to emphasize but also to build tension through its repetition. Perfect rhyme. This is the one we're all familiar with. It's when the accented vowel sounds and the end consonant sounds are the same. Lyrics are sung, not spoken like poetry, so this gives us a lot more options when it comes to rhyme. Look at this example from Uptown Funk by Mark Ronson. If you want to speak with certainty and confidence, a perfect rhyme will give the lyric a feeling like a statement of fact. Why? Because it's sonically almost identical to the word it's been rhymed with. Remember how we said repetition creates emphasis? It's the same thing. The vowel and the end consonant sounds are being repeated. The stronger the sonic connection, the bigger the full stop, the more resolution. So perfect rhymes are great for making a strong statement. Strong statements like those often found in a chorus. Look at this one from Oreo Speedwagon. And that goes for any sentiment the lyric might have, from pleasantries to bitter disdain. Have a look at Forget You by CeeLo Green. The perfect rhyme's strength is also its main drawback. Because the sonic connection is so strong, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Therefore, it's common and it's overused and will quickly give the lyric a healthy layer of cheese. Just look at any nursery rhyme. But that's not to say steer clear at all costs, that there are plenty of occasions when a perfect rhyme is the perfect choice. Family rhyme. This is where things get interesting. Family rhymes have the same accented vowel sounds and the ending consonants sound phonetically similar. Family rhymes are great substitutes for perfect rhymes. We still get a lot of that feeling of resolution, but now our rhyming options are infinitely more interesting and when sung, our ears can hardly tell the difference. But that slight sonic difference can still have a big impact. Have a look at Rolling in the Deep from Adele. That sonic disconnect reflects the sentiment of the lyric. The fire in Adele's heart isn't one of joy, it's one of hurt. And that's the key to deciding what type of rhyme to use to help get our lyrics meaning across. So to use family rhymes, we use consonant sounds that belong to the same phonetic family. We have plosive sounds, fricatives, and nasals. Here's an example of a family rhyme from the plosive family of consonants. Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. Here's one from the Fricatives, Happy by Pharrell Williams. So what's happening here? If Pharrell is so happy, why are his rhymes not perfect? Wouldn't that reflect the sentiment of the lyric better? Well go and listen to the song. The whole song has a pretty minor and sophisticated feel to it thanks to the Doreen mode. It's kind of like he's giving the audience an excuse to sing a pretty cheesy line like I'm happy and still look cool. Plus, he's repeating the word happy as the end rhyme type for the lines that come before it. A perfect rhyme like clap along if you feel like happiness needs no proof could have made the lyric quite cheesy. Here's an example from the nasal family. 
You can see with all these examples we still get nearly the same emotional feel as the perfect rhyme, but with the addition of sounding sophisticated, it's more mature and has added weight. If we jump back to the Adele lyric and swap out the family rhyme for a perfect rhyme, also let's pretend it doesn't affect the imagery, but you can feel there is less weight behind the lyrics meaning. And imagine that perfect rhyme type used for the whole section. The effect it would have is 1. Contradict the sentiment of the lyric and 2. Get tedious pretty fast. Using a perfect rhyme to write a deep serious song can't help but give it a nursery rhyme type of feel, if not used sparingly and in the right places for the right reasons. To make a family rhyme, just switch the ending consonant sound with any of the other consonant sounds in the same family. If you use rhymezone.com or brhyme.com to search for these, just take the word that you want to rhyme and change the end consonant to one in the same family. So for example, to find a rhyme for the word heart, we could swap the T for a K and get hark, but that's not a word, so just use arc and then look for rhyme for ARC and repeat the process with the other family members. Okay, so with just perfect rhymes and family rhymes, we have increased the way we can get our lyrics meaning across tenfold, but it doesn't stop there. If this is making sense to you, drop me a chop shop in the comments section. Additive Subtractive Rhymes This is when a consonant has been added or subtracted from the matching accented vowel sound. We're getting sonically further away from that perfect rhyme type. Things feel a little more shaky and incomplete now. So if our lyrics reflected that, this type of rhyme would really drive that point home. Have a look at this example from Post Malone's Circles. So the sentiment of the lyric is about a love bond that is falling apart. And what better way to say that than with a sonic bond that has some distance to it. So that's a subtractive rhyme. Additive rhyme types basically work in reverse to this. So say old Posty's love was still on the rocks, but he was sure things would work out, that they could add a little spice back into it. Would an additive rhyme type reflect this? Let's have a look. Seasons change, our love might heal. Feed the flame, cause it's still got feeling. So notice I used a family rhyme type there. When looking for these type of rhymes, we can refer back to our consonant chart. So say we wanted an additive rhyme for the word free. Add any consonant from the chart and get words like feet, fever, feeling. Then find rhymes for those words. Then just do the reverse if you're looking for subtractive rhymes. The key with this one is to get a good perfect or family rhyme for the accented vowel sound. Then find rhymes with more or less consonants at the end. The less consonants you add or subtract, the closer the sonic bond will be. Assonance rhyme. With assonance rhyme types, the accented vowel sounds are the same, but the ending consonants are different. Have a look at this example from Firework by Katy Perry. Notice in this song, the assonance rhyme type is used in the pre-chorus. There's a lot of tension building in the pre-chorus of this song. As in most songs, this type of rhyme really helps support and create that feeling of tension before the chorus explodes like a firework. Then look at the next two lines. Even more tension is caused by our final rhyme type. Consonance rhymes. This is the loosest sonic bond we can have. A consonance rhyme type is when the accented vowel sounds don't match, but the ending consonants have the same sound. So back to firework. We get a building tension and it's unstable. It's desperate for resolution. And when the chorus gives us all that, it seems to explode like a firework. If you're writing a song about your life falling apart, try using some consonant rhymes and see how it brings that emotion to life. With assonance rhymes, we switch the consonant sounds for sounds from a different consonant family, but keep the matching vowel sounds. With consonance rhymes, those vowel sounds don't match. So look at that section of Firework again. These things don't happen by accident. Try it for yourself. Go and find perfect rhymes for this section of the song and see the difference it makes in the feel of the lyrics. That's the only way to really understand the effect of different rhyme types, is to go and try it for yourself. Start with the examples I've given you and switch out any perfect rhymes for consonance rhymes. Switch any family rhymes for additive or subtractive rhymes and just feel the difference it makes to the lyrics. Rhyme types are just one of the many tools we have to support and even create the emotion we want to get across in our songs. So next time we'll take a look at rhyme schemes and what effects we can create with them, how we can combine them with our rhyme types to really get the meaning of our lyrics across. If you found the information in this video valuable, be sure to hit the like button. And if you can think of anyone that would benefit from watching this, be sure to share it with them. Okay, catch you next time.